Today, there is more bad news coming down the pipeline for Leafs fans with one injury update that's not looking too good, as well as one that, you know, is looking kind of better at the moment, as well as is Shane Wright for the Seattle Kraken becoming a NHL bust? I'll break it all down for you coming up on this episode of Hattrick HQ, but before we get into it, just want to say that 75% of you guys watching this aren't subscribed to the channel. And if you're looking for a home for daily hockey content, daily Leafs content here on YouTube, you found it right here at Hattrick HQ. So go down below and hit that subscribe button. But with that said, let's get right into our first topic of the video today, which is, is Shane Wright a bust? And yes, as we take a look here uh, from TSM Pierre LeBron's report, he says the Kraken forward Shane Wright is back with the team for the time being. The Kraken are officially out of the playoff mix, but the franchise wants to get a closer look at Wright alongside Jaden Swartz and Jordan Everly. And with some bigger minutes before he returns to the AHL for their playoff run, he puts up 20 goals in 56 AHL games. And yes, this has been a highly debated topic in the NHL uh, for quite some time here now. And if we take a look at uh, Shane Wright's stats here, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, Shane Wright may be uh, a bust here at, at the fourth overall pick back in the 2022 NL NHL entry draft. Uh, so far in the NHL, he played in 22-23 where he played eight games, had two points, one goal, one assist, then spent the rest of the year uh, with... Uh, you know, the Coachella Valley Firebirds, then went back to the OHL with the Windsor Spitfires, and then this season, he plays played most of the season, or all of the season, with the Coachella uh, Valley Firebirds in 56 games, where he put up 20 goals, 23 assists for 43 points, but... Since being called back up to the NHL, Shane Wright in five games only has one goal uh, with, you know, dash one on the tally there. And, you know, a lot of people have been highly discussing this topic uh, throughout Twitter, throughout, throughout Reddit. Is Shane Wright the next bust in the NHL that people are going to look back on and say, hey, this guy was such a highly tatted prospect. What happened to this guy? Why, you know, didn't he live up to the expectations that everybody expected for him? And that's a good question to ask because, I mean, you you got to, you know, take into account this guy is still young and, and, you know, he still has time to develop here and become an NHL player. And, you know, having him up now playing with the top players on the Kraken, uh, like Jaden Swartz and Jordan Lemmerly, some of the top players on that team, is really going to give them, you know, a, a sight line of when will Shane Wright be ready? Does he need more time in the AHL? Will we bring him up to start the season next year? This is all going to unfold here over this next little while. And for me personally, you know, you can never count anybody out because they can always come in and, you know, light up the league. Everybody, you know, uh, was, you know, harping on Uri Slavkowski, who was to uh, pick for them in, in, for Montreal in that draft. And... We've seen him recently just kind of take off and become, you know, the prospect that everybody expected him to be in the NHL. And, you know, the first couple of years, yes, he was getting NHL experience. Uh, you know, he was, you know, struggling a little bit. Everybody had, you know, was harping on him. But he has developed into being a great player here uh, for this Montreal Canadiens team. And over this last little while, is looking like, you know, one of the, you know, top three guys on this Montreal Canadiens team. So this could be the case for Shane Wright too. I think what Shane Wright needs is not AHL time. I think he needs NHL time. I think you need to bring him up next season. Uh, you know, maybe plug him in on the third line if you need to. Maybe plug him in on the second line if he's playing good. And, and just give him that NHL experience. Because he's not going to learn how to be a great NHL player without playing against NHL players. Because this is what happened with Slavkowski. We're going to make a lot of comparisons between these two here in this video. Like I said, Slavkowski, you know, obviously struggled a little bit out of the gate. 18 years old, everybody had so much weight on, on his shoulders for him to be, you know, the next star with in the Montreal Canadiens and this is the same case with Shane Wright he was supposed to be the number one overall pick that year but Montreal did not take him he slid the four to Seattle and you know he played eight games they didn't like what they saw they sent him back to the AHL he went back to the OHL and then this year up to the AHL for 56 games and, and you know and now he's you know uh, up here again until the end of the season uh, until the AHL playoffs start so we can go back down there and try to help them win uh, but I think what he needs is 
this NHL time. I think if you give Shane Wright, you know, a little bit of a hand here, get him up playing NHL, maybe if it's third line minutes, it's still going to help develop this guy uh, into knowing, you know, learning the NHL game, learning what he needs to do to adjust his game for it to be dominant here in the NHL. And, you know, when people say, you know, bust this early on in their career, it, you, you can't say that. I think he's so young right now. Or what is he, like 20 years old? Yeah, 20 yeah, twenty years of age, I mean, you can't put this, this much weight on this guy. Yes, he is a top five overall pick. Yes, it is the Seattle Kraken. The Seattle Kraken do have a great ro roster. I mean, unfortunately, this season, they're out of the playoffs right now, but they have been playing great hockey, and they have a great roster within that organization that, you know, when Montreal, we're going to draw a lot more comparisons here, but when Montreal brought Sapkowski and they're in the middle of a rebuild, they are, you know, looking to get these young guys developed so that, you know, in a couple of years' time, they can be competing for the playoffs again, can be competing for the Stanley Cup again. So these two teams are in completely separate you know, mindsets. Seattle's looking to be a winning team, looking to make the playoffs, and Montreal, you know, is trying to look, you know, to get better, develop their guys, and Shane Wright was kind of tossed into this mix here where, you know, there's a guy there already like Matty Beneers who has been playing great out of the gate for them uh, since they, you know, drafted that guy, and there was a lot of weight on Shane Wright's shoulders too be the next, I guess you could say, Matty Beneers for the Seattle Kraken team to come in and just instantly be a goal scorer, inst instantly be a, a point leader for this club, and, you know, it hasn't fanned out quite yet. But there is promise here with him having 43 points in, was it, 56 games or something within the AHL, there is promise for him to ha have that type of production with this Seattle Kraken thing, a team. I just think he needs, you know, time to adjust to playing in the NHL, uh, adjust to, you know, adjusting his game to the style of NHL play. And I think this will help this guy further his career. But, like, I don't think he's a bust as of yet. There is a lot of people saying he is. I don't, I think it's too harsh at this very point in time to call this guy a bust. Uh, I think, you know, he has a lot of promise. He has a lot of potential. Yes, he only has three points in, you know, was it 15 games or, or less uh, within his NHL career. But you can't judge a guy off his first 15 games in the NHL. It's just impossible to do. You can't do that because it's just not fair to him and not fair to the organization that, you know, they're taking a look at this guy through 15 games. He only has three points. But, you know, it, it, it might come next year, make this starting lineup coming out of camp and have a dominant season. And then he's going to look at everybody and saying, who's the boss? You know, like, it, it just doesn't make sense to call this guy at 20 years old. If he was, say, like 24 or 25, it would make sense for you to start calling him a boss because he hasn't done nothing at that age. But he still has so much time to learn and develop and just become a great hockey player within this league. That I think it's too early to call that. And I think... I'm I'm very hopeful for Shane Wright because obviously this guy was so dominant in juniors, had a great World Junior Championship tournament, and now, you know, everybody's had so much hype build up around him. Was he going to go number one? He ultimately sipped to number four and hasn't really done nothing with it since then. But I think there is promise here. I think his ceiling is high, and I think he can hit this potential at some point in his career. But I want to hear from you guys down below in the comment section. What do you think about Shane Wright? Uh, do you think he's a bust? Do you think, you know, we got to give him a little bit more time? Let me know down below in the comment section. We're going to get into the second topic of the video today, which is more bad news for Leafs fans. And yes, if we take a look here, uh, this is about Kelly Arncroak. He says hey, he was skating at Scotiabank Arena with skill staff before the team's optional skate on Wednesday. The forward has been out since March 14th after sustaining his second hand injury of the season. The forward wasn't shooting and doesn't appear anywhere close to returning. Complicating matters right now for the Leafs uh, is the fact that they might, might not even have the salary craft room for the forward to return in the regular season anyway. And if we take a look at it, it says the Maple Leafs placed Mitch Marner on long-term injury reserve this week for roster man management purposes, but they said he may return to the lineup this weekend. Once Marner is activated, the Leafs will uh, have under 500000 in cap room and no room to activate Yaron Croak's $2.1 million salary. Given that Keefe has said that Lilligren and Edmondson's injuries aren't expected to the point that they can't come back before the end of the regular season, it makes uh, it just... It makes... Uh, it may just make the most sense for Yaron Croak to spend the next two weeks continue to recover uh, with the hope he can return for game one of the playoffs. At the point, at that point, the salary cap is no longer enforced. And yes, obviously, 
I mean, this is tough news for, uh, you know, Toronto Maple Leafs fans here. Uh, you know, Callie Yarncroke uh, still out with that hand injury, his second hand injury of the season. The update on him as of now is, you know, he was out on the ice. He, he was shooting and uh, he wasn't shooting. So it's not a good sign that, you know, he, with the hand injury, he's out on the ice. He's skating, but he can't shoot the puck at this time. So obviously, he still needs a little bit more time to get through this injury and, and recover fully to get back out on the ice and play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And obviously, this guy has been a great player for the Toronto Maple Leafs club this season. A great bottom six guy. He has 10 goals, 11 assists for 21 points. 55 hits has been laying the body for this team as well well and he's just been you know a, a very good a very solid player every time he's out there on the ice he's you know looking to you know make a scoring chance he's also great defensively in my opinion and just having him not there is kind of a blow to this roster and now seeing that he may not be able to return because of the salary cap situation if he was fully healthy it is hard to see as well but on the bright side here, if you give this guy some more time to recover, get back out, you know, on the ice every single day, and you know, work into work work up into shooting and seeing how your hand feels after shooting and stuff like this, uh, I think this is great. A time they haven't released the timetable as of now. But if he comes back, say, in the playoffs, the salary cap doesn't matter. They don't need to worry about his $2.1 million. As of then, he can just get plugged into this lineup if they're feeling like they need him in. And I think once he is fully healealthy, once he is fully cleared to play, he will be impl implemented into this lineup, but I don't think it will be till playoff time. So we won't have to worry about the cap because obviously Mitch Marner will be coming back. They only have 500k. So, you know, then uh, at that point, you don't have enough room for Yaron Croak to slide in to be activated again. So we're going to wait till playoffs, uh, I'm assuming, for him to be back because obviously his injury is still pretty serious at this point. And... Once he comes back, I have no doubt in my mind that he'll be back into his ways like he was before when he got injured. He was playing great hockey for this club, and, you know, I just want to see him back out there on the ice. You never want to see anybody held out with injury. But there is another update we do have here, and that is on Joel Edmondson, someone who they acquired at the trade deadline. And it says Joel Edmondson is on the ice for the Leafs optional skate. First time we've seen him on the ice since his injury. And they also go on here to say this from uh, head coach Sheldon Keefe. He says he's progressing well. It's all just a matter of how he handles each day. Uh, he said, I don't see him as an option for Saturday against the Montreal Canadiens, though. So, obviously, Edmondson, uh, same kind of boat that Yarn Croak's in. Yarn Croak's a bit more serious than Edmondson at this point in time, but Edmondson's progress, uh, progressing well. Uh, you know, he's getting back out there during skates. He, he's, you know, getting back out to, you know, his ways, and I don't think they disclosed his injury. Let me know down below if they did. But, uh, you know, it's great to see this guy back on the ice. This guy is going to be an impact defender for them in the playoffs. He's going to be stirring up a lot of stuff out there on the ice, be trying to draw some Henleys. You know, that's the way Edmondson is. He's a physical guy in a seven-game series. He's going to get under the opponent's skin, and he's just going to be a beast out there for this team, laying the body, blocking the shots, being a great de de defensive defenseman. So seeing him back out there, you know, keep saying he's progressing well is great news. So there is some bad news and some good news here today for Leafs fans. Obviously, everybody wants to see Yarn Croak back. Everybody wants to see Edmondson back. Everybody wants to see a finally a full, healthy Toronto Maple Leafs team. Because I know I do. It just seems like this season, they've been riddled with injuries. They've had the injury bug. And we haven't got to see that full, you know, Brad True Living Toronto Maple Leafs team due to these injuries. So, I'm really hoping that Edmondson can back, get back soon because, like I said, I think this guy's going to be such an uh, impact defender for them come, uh, you know, the playoff time. And, and Cal Yarncroft as well, he's been such a great depth forward for this team and could, could, could provide some great secondary offense from that bottom six once he comes back during the playoffs is where I'm going to place him. But I want to hear from you guys down below in the comment section. What do you think about the Toronto Maple Leafs injuries uh, as of right now? Uh, do you want, what do you think they're going to do come playoff time? If Yarncroft comes back, what do you think the plan is? And what are your thoughts on Joel Edmondson? Do you think he's going to be an impact defender like I do? Obviously, as a Montreal Canadiens fan myself, I got to see Joel Edmondson play for Montreal, and I really did like his style of play. And I think it's I think Leaf fans are really going to like his style of play come playoff time as well. But we're going to get into everybody's favorite topic here on the channel, which is comment of the day. And the comment of the day today. Goes to John. He says, I went to my first Growlers game three weeks ago and bought a Growlers too. I think I cursed them. And then we get a reply from the Newfoundland Growlers official YouTube account where they say, 
this is your fault and obviously if you missed the video the, uh, a couple days ago we talked about uh, the Growlers uh, un uh, unfortunately folding and not being able to play the rest of their season but we gotta say shout out to John shout out to Newfoundland Growlers for uh, commenting on that video uh, I thought that one was pretty funny uh, you know saying he thinks he cursed the team the Newfoundland Growlers came back and said this is your fault just a, such great banter down there in the comment section I love to see it but if you guys enjoyed this video make sure down below hit that like button hit that subscribe button round the road for 3,500 subscribers here on the channel so if you're looking for a home or maybe a second home for NHL content here on YouTube you found it right here at Hatchark HQ and if you want to check out that video I did on the Growlers and, and that the other day it'll be popping up on your screen right now but as always I've been your host KC keep your stick on the ice